So at this point in the process, we want to be able to animate our character. And in order to do that, we have to create, first of all, a skeleton, and then we have to associate that skeleton with the character mesh. So we have a variety of tools in Maya to do this. Uh, one of the newer ways is using a tool set called Human IK. Human IK is a skeletal and rigging system that was ported over from Motion Builder, which we'll actually talk about in uh, a few minutes. But for now, what we want to do is use the skeleton generator. The skeleton generator will basically do exactly what it says. It allows you to create a new skeleton from scratch. So I'll just say new skeleton. And now you can see that it creates kind of a default humanoid skeleton. I'm actually going to put this in a layer just so that it colors it more vividly so you can see it more clearly. And now begin to modify the creation of the skeleton. So I've got a series of sliders that allow me to control things like, for instance, the number of spine joints. If I want to increase or decrease that, it allows me to control the overall character scale. So I can bump that up or I can bump that down depending on what I'm, what I'm trying to do. I can also go in and I can add specific bones. For instance, for the, uh, let's use the arm bones as an example. If I wanted to create an interior roll bone for the upper arms, I just click a button on upper arms and lower arms and it'll automatically insert those extra bones as needed. So I'm going to turn those off for now. We'll go around, down to the feet. So let's uh, actually reduce the size of my character there a little bit. Let's say that I wanted to begin to align these feet with my existing character. What I can do is I can take the joints now and I can begin to move them and position them kind of relative to my character. And then as soon as I make those edits, all I have to do is say mirror to the other side and it'll automatically apply those to the other side. Now obviously I need to take this a lot farther in order to uh, visually align it with my character but for the sake of the demonstration I'm actually just going to hide that and I'll bring up a skeleton that I've actually already refined. So now we want to actually take the skeleton and this mesh and associate the two. So you can see if I move the skeleton I have no association between the two. I do, however, have a simple relationship between the neck joint and the eyeballs and the teeth. That's just a simple hierarchy, a parent-child relationship. But for the mesh, I actually want to create a skin. So I'm actually going to use a handy skinning method called interactive skin, which basically allows you to associate the mesh and provide you with manipulators that allow you to easily control that association. So now I can basically drag and drop and slide these manipulators in order to control the influence of a specific joint. So for instance, if I wanted to come up and begin to edit this leg, you can see here that as I rotate this leg into place, I'm getting, um, it's actually rotated forward, so it's a little easier to see. As I rotate this leg into place, I'm getting a decent deformation, but it's not ideal. So I just switch back over into my interactive manipulation tool, and now I can begin to interactively control the amount of fall off along the length of the joint as well as, or the distance as well as the rate of the fall off across that distance. So now I can go simply go to the next joint, begin to test the behavior of that joint, and then I can switch back into my manipulators, and then I can start to dial those down. You can see there by doing that, I'm actually increasing the amount of fold in the back of the knee. Now I can switch back over to this one, and I can do the same thing within reason. So let's dial that down a little bit, and now I've got a nice crease there along the back of the leg, which I didn't have initially. So I'd basically go in and I would repeat this process for each part of the character and eventually I would go back in and I would uh, I would uh, build a rig on top of this character. So we have a variety of ways of doing that. For instance, I could build a my own custom rig using things like like IK handles and um, constraints and whatnot. So for instance, for the leg, I could go in and I could create an IK handle for the leg where I would actually grab the uh, root of the leg, the hip, and drag all the way down to the base of the leg or the ankle, and now I get an IK relationship between those two points. Now I can continue and build that for each of these limbs, and I can really, really customize it to a high degree using, uh, using these tools along with, like I said, constraints and expressions. Now, another thing I can do is I can send this character to Motion Builder and I can use Motion Builder's rigging tools and animation tools to kind of automate that process and add existing animation or refine existing animation on this character. And by doing that, I would simply basically select my skeleton and select my mesh, anything that I wanted to export. And I would just come in here, say export selection. And in my option boxes, op option box rather, I would choose uh, FBX export do the export selection, 
And I've got a variety of settings over here that I need to make sure I turn on. If I have animation, I would include that. I also want to include my deformed models, my skins. If I have facial animation, I might want to include blend shapes and so on. And ultimately, I would just save this out as an FBX file. We'll call this character.fbx. Save that out. And now I can go into Motion Builder, load this character up, and begin to animate it. So now in Motion Builder, I just simply go to my file browser and I open the character.fbx file. And the character that uh, I've previously saved out of Maya, along with all of its associated textures, as well as its skeleton and skinning information, is now brought directly into Motion Builder. So now you can see here that I have indeed a character and I have uh, all the skinning information. So we'll just com uh, compare that. So now what I want to do is basically build a rig that I can begin to work with uh, for animation. So I'm going to go down to my asset browser and under my character nodes, or rather my character settings, I want to drag a character node directly onto my skeleton. Now, assuming I've used the appropriate naming conventions, all I have to do is just say characterize, tell it that I want to create a biped, and then just simply turn that on. And now I have an FKIK rig for my character. Now I'm going to hide the original skeleton and you can see now I have a rig that basically gives me FK control or rather IK control as well as FK control so that I can actually go in and animate either directly on the joints or using the end effectors. Now I also have a full body effect so you can see if I pull on the left side of the character it will affect the right side and likewise if I pull on the right side it will affect the left side. I also have the ability to go in and do pinning, where I can actually pin the translation and rotation of one side. And now as I pull on the left side, he'll try to maintain that position uh, for his hand and arm on the other side. So beyond that, what I can do now that this is a characterized character is I can bring in other animations. For instance, I can go into uh, the asset browser over here and I can access a library of clips that I may have created um, from other projects, or this could be keyframe animation, mocap animation, doesn't really matter where it came from. But the point is, once it's made available in Motion Builder, I can simply import that into my scene and associate it with my new character. So I'll merge that uh, animation directly into my scene here. And now you'll see when I play this back, I have a simple little walk cycle with a turn at the end. And now I basically want to be able to apply that to my character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my character list and grab the new character. And I'm going to feed in the walk cycle, which is called Skeleton 6. And now I'll have a direct connection between the two. So wherever my uh, walk cycle skeleton is going, my new character is going to follow. And in addition to that, I have the ability to control a variety of different things. For instance, as my character is walking, if I were to change the scale of my character, he's going to cover a larger distance if he's a larger character. If he's a smaller character, let's put that on loop, if he's a smaller character, he's going to cover a shorter distance. So it will actually compensate uh, for the uh, space based on the size of my character. So let's undo that and get back to my default size here. Now another thing you'll notice is that as my character is walking, I basically want to uh, be able to make some corrections to a variety of different things. So you can see there his feet are actually going through the ground. So one thing I can do is I can turn on something called floor contacts. So I'm going to go into my settings here and turn those on. Those are actually already on, but I'm going to switch my character over into a control rig view and put him back into his T-pose. And now what you'll see if I pull in is I've got these little dots here, which I can actually scale up to be a more visually uh, kind of recognizable. These dots uh, will allow me to define a boundary for my feet. So I can define an inner sole, basically the inner foot. I can also define the outer foot. In addition, I can define kind of the base of the foot where I want the ground to, to be. And I can also define the tip of the toe as well as the ball joint. Actually, those need to be related to one another. So that um, should do it. Let's actually pull that back a little bit and grab these guys and pull those forward a little bit. And now that basically defines kind of a general outline of my foot and how I want that to react to the ground. Now, what you'll notice here is if I were to grab the effector and actually push that down, you can see he's actually not going to uh, recognize the ground currently. So all I have to do is go into my character settings and under floor contacts, I just simply have to turn on my feet floor contact 
which is there, and my toe floor contact, which is there. And now when I push through the ground, you can see there that he's actually going to stop. So if I rotate that foot a little bit, you'll see that as I push that down, the toes will hit first, then the ball joint, and then the base of his foot. So now what I want to do is actually have that work with the retarget. So with a live retarget, I'll just simply switch back over into my skeleton. And now as he walks, you can see that he's going to clearly plant his feet on the ground appropriately. So if I turn off, for instance, the floor contacts, just to show you again a before and after, notice how his feet are dipping below the floor. If I turn on my feet and toe contacts, now his feet are planted firmly on the ground. So one other thing I might want to do is actually blend this with another animation. So I'm going to quickly go in and uh, do what's called a plot. I'm going to transfer the animation from my red skeleton here to my main character. And from there, I'm going to basically have a kind of a direct animation. So instead of a connection between the two, I'm going to have a, an animation directly on my main character, which means that I can actually go into the node editor here. This is kind of a scene graph, and I can just take all the nodes for that skeleton that I brought in and I can just simply delete those because I don't really need them anymore. Now I'll go back to my main scene and you can see that indeed all the animation is on my character. So now what I want to do is take this a step further and begin to blend it with say another sequence. So I'm going to go into my story tool which is the nonlinear animation tool and I'm going to insert a character animation track and by inserting the character animation track I can now feed in my new character to this track and I can take all of his existing animation, the current take of animation, and I can insert that into my timeline. Now you can see that I've got a single clip that basically represents all of my animation. So if I were to grab this clip and go into scale mode, I can actually take that clip, scale it down, and I'm increasing the speed of the animation, or I can go in the opposite direction. I can scale it out, and I'm slowing down the rate of the animation. So you can do broad changes like uh, scaling of time, but you can also go in and you can do comps of other types of animation. So for instance, while he's walking, I may want to add some other upper body animation to this. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a subtrack called an override, which will basically allow me to take another animation and essentially override this at different points. So I'm going to take a jump clip and I'm going to drag that into my timeline here. And you can see here, if I stretch that out a little bit, whenever I drag my timeline over that point, my character is suddenly going to disappear off into the distance, and he's going to take on this new animation. So I have this jump animation. And I like the jump, but I don't like the whole jump. I just want to borrow that upper body animation and put it onto my character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go into my, my mask here, and I'm going to turn off the full body effect, and I'm going to turn on only the upper body effect. So now, as my character is walking, what you'll see is as he walks, at that particular point in time, he's going to raise his hands out and stretch them out. Maybe this is right when he's about to breathe some fire. And I can basically go in and I can I can mute that and solo it as well. So if I mute it, you can see I can remove the effect of the clip altogether. Let's actually pull into the front of the character so you can see this. If I mute or unmute that, you can see the effect of the clip clearly. The cool thing is I can take this clip and I can scale it out over time as I need to, and then I can begin to blend it in. So as he maybe makes his turn, right about there is where I want the clip to start. So I'll put it right about here. I'll unmute that. And now you can see as he turns, his arms will raise up. And then I can also go in and I can change how that blends in. So right about there, I might want to actually take that clip and begin to blend it in. There we go. Got the right handle. So I can take that clip and I can begin to blend it in. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to, instead of just turning the clip on immediately, it allows me to start the blend at different points and also change the, the amount of blend at different points. So now as he's doing his turn, say he's breathing fire at this point, now I can begin to blend that out right here as well. So now he's going to fade his arms back in and go right back into the walk. So ultimately what I want to do is take all this and I want to send it back to Maya. So I'm just going to right click on my character track here and what I'm going to do is called a plot back to the original animation. So I'm going to plot the whole scene to the current take and that will essentially transfer the animation from the story tool back to my character. So now I can come in here and I can delete this and all the animation that I just created with my various clips has now been applied to my character. So there you can see as he turns, he stretches out his arms, breathes some fire, and then turns around and 
blends right back into the original walk cycle. So now I want to send this back to Maya. So I have everything stored on the skeleton. All I have to do at this point is basically export this back into the FBX file and then merge it back into my Maya scene. So I'll just simply do a save as, and I'll just call this character two, and we'll simply save that out and go back to Maya and load it back in. So now back in Maya, because the character and skeleton essentially coexist in both Maya and Motion Builder, all I have to do is merge the changes back from Motion Builder into Maya. So I'll just simply go to File Import, and in the options here, if I choose FBX as I import, all I have to do is set it to update scene elements. So instead of adding anything new, all I'm doing is updating the changes, which are the animation changes that I just made. Simply import that now. That'll bring that into my scene. And now you can see here that all the animation that I just worked on previously is indeed in Maya. So now he does his little walk turn. He raises his arms to, to shoot fire out of his mouth right as the planes are coming in. And then if I wanted to, I'd add another animation sequence there where he swipes at the planes and knocks them away. But for now, we'll uh, leave it at that. And we'll talk about uh, some of the other kind of cool effects that we can add to this scene in Maya.